Uh, so we've now put a lot of effort into developing methods to determine beta and to analyze beta for structures. Uh, what we're now going to do is to take a different perspective where we ask how to interpret the beta values in the context of hazards in the world around us. So a central tenet of structural design is to come up with solutions that are both economical or affordable and at the same time have a sufficient level of safety. So of course now the question is how do we determine whether a structure is safe enough? Um, so let's first take a look at uh, the risk tolerance that we have as individuals uh, and as a society. That is to say, what levels of hazard are we willing to tolerate? So shown on the plot over here um, are various annual probabilities of an individual dying during uh, a, a particular activity. Um, and it is arranged according to some measure of the extent to which that activity is voluntary. So how much choice does the individual have in participating in it or not. So on the, on the, on the left here you have relatively risky activities like, like mountain climbing or skiing and on the right here you have activities that you have very limited choice in, such, such as being in an earthquake. So what is shown here is calculated by first looking at uh, what is the fatal accident rate of a given activity. So for a certain number of hours spent doing the activity, what is the probability of um, an accident occurring. Well, when that is adjusted for the total exposure time that we have to that activity. So what fraction of time do you spend actually doing that activity? Uh, and that, is, that is then further adjusted by taking into account the, pr the, the probability of dying if you have an accident doing that activity. Now the principle to, to keep in mind here is that as individuals and as society we take measures to adjust our exposure to hazards until it is reduced to values that we are willing to tolerate. One of those measures is what is on the x-axis here, which is our choice to participate in the activity or not. So as a result of that, activities that we have more choice in participating in, invariably end up having larger probabilities of resulting in death than activities that we have no choice in. So from a civil engineering point of view, it's, it's the side on the right here that is of particular interest to us, uh, where our societal tolerance for exposure to hazard plays a role and where we, as structural engineers, fit in. Uh, now, uh, for larger groups, which can be uh, companies or industries or society as a whole, the focus is more holistic in, this, in the sense of looking at the cumulative damage that a particular hazard can result in. One very common way of, of looking at this problem is, is through an FN plot, um, where the hazard is, is, is considered directly in terms of the number of fatalities that, that, that it can result in. So what's on the x-axis here is the number of fatalities associated with hazards in a particular uh, activity or group of activities that can be an industry or society as a whole. And then what's on the y-axis here is the probability of having an accident which results in the number of fatalities on the x-axis being exceeded. The probability, for example, of having an accident that results in more than one fatality is 10 to the negative 3, the probability of having an accident that results in more than 10 fatalities is 10 to the negative 4, etc. Now the plot I have here is just an example of, of an FN plot. There are different plots corresponding to different types of infrastructure and different industries, but in general they will show uh, a region of unacceptable exposure to, to, to the hazard, where probabilities associated with a particular minimum number of fatalities are deemed to be unacceptable. And then there will be some line below which uh, the, the hazard becomes tolerable. Um, the word acceptable is also sometimes used, although that is, tends to be frowned upon, especially when you're in this region over here, which is why this additional caveat is put in place, which says, as low as reasonably practicable. So. Uh, a hazard 
falling in this region close to this line is fine, but uh, it is preferable that it be lowered even further. What these plots also often show is, is an upper limit on the number of fatalities that is acceptable in any way. So having more fatalities due to an accident is unacceptable no matter how improbable that event might be.